there you go we're now live i love that where it goes it's showtime it makes it real <laughs> doesn't it yeah, i'm scared <laughs> that's scary so why are you scared uh, just out of interest because i know we talked about this briefly about getting out of your comfort zone and um, why why is this out of your comfort zone Oh, I don't know. I think as soon as a camera points at me, I don't actually know my own name. It's madness. Isn't it? I do know what I'm doing, but I don't know my own name. Uh, but you're right. I need to get out of my comfort zone. So here we are. There you go. So um, what is your name, just out of interest? Just to make sure, because you're on camera. <laughs> I know, I know. We're okay, we're okay then. So um, a couple of people have joined. So um, thanks for joining this afternoon. Would you be kind enough just to confirm that you can hear us um, loud and clear? Um, hi, Mark. Thanks very much for joining. Nice to see you on here. Can you hear us loud and clear? Um, and likewise, um, that'd be great. Thank you if you could do that. Um, so, Sue, whilst we're waiting, I'm going to introduce you anyway. Um, hi Jeremy, morning, afternoon, thanks for joining, nice to speak to you at 7 o'clock this morning. How was the gym? Did you manage to do your um, 22 miles on the treadmill this morning, Mr Tyler? Wait and see what he says. Um, so Sue, thank you so much for joining me, really, really grateful. Um, you are the Lettings Managing Director of Richard James down in Swindon. Um, you have been in the industry since 1997. Mm -hmm. uh, you, were, <laughs> you were in the RAF before. I, I didn't tell you that. How did you know that? Uh, I I do some research. <laughs> it's all about research. So tell us a bit about your journey. How come you went from in the RAF and how come you decided to become a, a letting agent? Right. Well, in the RAF, I was a survival equipment fitter. And when I left, there wasn't much call for packing parachutes or life rafts, et cetera, et cetera. So I thought, what on earth am I going to do? Um, so to cut a very long story, very short, I bought a franchise. And it was a lettings franchise. Who They, they now no longer exist and no one will have heard of them anymore. But it was a small lettings franchise with about 25 branches, I think, at the time. Um, but at that time, Swindon was the fastest growing town in Europe, I think it was then. Um, so my franchise grew really, really quickly. And, and again, a very long story short, um, the franchisor didn't do a great job. So I walked away and the other franchisees walked away and that was me on my own. Um, but what they did do was a great job in terms of training. It was a week's residential course and then that was it. I was off. But of course, there wasn't all the legislation and all the red tape that there is now. So that was sufficient at that time. Um, so that was 97 and grew the business uh, just it was just myself behind the desk on my own for a few years and then I brought staff on and then flash forward to 2011 um, and Rich James estate agents um, obviously who we did estate agency and dabbled a tiny bit in lettings and myself just lettings we merged our businesses together um, and that was really when it took off that's when we suddenly got some traction and started to move um, and since then, we've made a few acquisitions, a few mergers. We've opened a head office where um, we have mainly my lettings team, the property managers, the tenancy managers, the finance team. Um, that are uh, we've got a virtual office within the office as well, so a sales and lettings office within the office, um, and sales progressors. So we have a head office of about I think there's about fifty people now in head office. Um, and that's that was a game changer for us. That really brought it all together. It was very difficult. We had nine, well, we had, I think, we had nine offices, and trying to do all of that when not really without a central place was really difficult. So that was a game changer for us. Um, and when did you do that? We did that, I think, two thousand fifteen, two thousand sixteen. Yeah, and I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure because we we took um, an office out of a high street office. We closed, and I thought, oh, should we be closing high street offices? But it was absolutely the right thing to do. Good. And I just wanted to, to thank you. Um, hi, Abigail. Thanks very much for joining today. Jeremy, 20 minutes on the fat burner session. Well done. That wasn't quite 22 miles, but that's a start. So <laughs> let us know how you get on tomorrow. Um, so I just want to thank you because I know normally we start these at half 12. Um, but Agents Together are doing a webinar, their first um, wellness um 
webinar today um which is at one o'clock so i'm grateful for you coming just just wanted to discuss well-being with you and wellness with with what's going on um you know what what are your thoughts on well-being and um agents together maybe and, and what's going yeah. on well incredibly important isn't it i mean with what's going on just at the moment um there are a lot of people suffering in silence worrying um in every industry but certainly in ours um, and I know certainly in my my uh, my team there are people who have got challenges I mean it can be anything from a minor challenge to a major challenge but it's it's how you feel isn't it um, and people don't know where to turn so I think it's an amazing thing I think what we need to do is sorry for myself as a business owner I need to make sure that my team know about this so I've obviously sent them the the link and said to them you know if you need to to talk or just whatever i'm here the team are here but there's this other resource so i think probably um the people at the top know about it but we need to make sure that the people um right the way down also know about it and can and can take part thank you so again you know if anybody is watching this now um you can go and register at agentstogether.co.uk and even if you can't watch it you will get a recording um, which you know I'm sure will be excellent. So again, so I'm really, really grateful. Hi, Owen. Thanks very much for joining us. Luke Sinclair. Luke, lovely to have you on here. There you go. Well, wonderful business lady and leader. Well, Bless no, you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's a lovely start. Um, can we talk about the tenant fee ban, and then we come on to COVID and the lessons that you've learned? Yeah. So, um, what? That must have been, you know, appreciate you You had quite a while to prepare for it. Hopefully you were and didn't leave it to the last minute that, that some that some agents did. Um, so, again, how, you know, presumably um, you lost a, a good percentage of your business. So what things did you do to, um, to obviously make the difference? So the tenancy plan... Cost us 23% of our income, and we were operating wow. at 25% profit. Wow! So when they announced it, and I looked at that, I thought, I don't want to say what I thought, but I knew I had to do something. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I had a little panic, really, and thought, Oh my God, what earth are we going to do? Couldn't see what to do. Um, but but I'll just give a little plug here. I, I met with a lady called Sally Lawson, who I'm sure you know, everybody knows. And yeah, she, agents rainmaker. Yeah. She's got an eye on the prize in terms of money. So she had a little tenant fee um, seminar, and I think I might have met Luke at it, funnily enough. Um, and it was all about ideas as, as to, you know, what, what on earth can we do? And that, that was early days. People didn't know really what to do, but it was just sharing ideas and agents sharing ideas, which is a new thing, isn't it? Agents coming together and sharing ideas and talking to each other and being friends is a really a new thing, and it's brilliant. It's just that's how it should always have been but it's fabulous now and it's come to it you know it's come to it for now with the covid thing with all of these webinars and it's fantastic um but yeah so for us we looked at obviously in, the first thing was you've got to increase your fees it was just everyone was just doing things for nothing low fees um fighting for the business it was just and that was just madness so we did increase our fees a little bit um, but, but what we really did, we, sh we shaped our offering, we reshaped our offering um, and we stopped doing things for free because letting agents by their very nature, just they want to please and they just do everything for free. Um, so we looked at that and, and, and realised how much we were doing and how much time it was costing and how much money it was costing and we stopped. We just basically stopped, you know, don't sort out insurance claims for landlords. Don't short out, sort out maintenance for the flat upstairs that you don't manage. Just all sorts of things. And, and these are the things that take hours and hours and hours. Um, we introduced um, additional income streams like rent guarantees, insurances and all that sort of thing. We did a million, a million different things. Um, but luckily, because we've got quite a sizable portfolio, lots of little tweaks did make a difference to us. Um, so after the after the tenant fee ban we we came out of it with no less income we it was, it was over four hundred thousand pounds to us but we made that up in all of the tweaks that we did um so Fantastic. It was hard work but it was worth it and how did you persuade your landlords that you were increasing their fees what we did was we um we basically drip fed them because up until that point there was an awful lot of changes in legislation as well so we drip fed them over a period
in about five or six weeks, little bits of information about the legislative changes and just, just giving them information and educating them and just being present really. And then um, the sort of the seventh or eighth communication we sent out to them was, as I'm sure you appreciate, our workload has gone up, therefore we're going to be putting our fees up. And we had some resistance, but far less than I expected. I expected it to be really hard work, but it was, and, and we lost two or three landlords, but the landlords that you'd want to lose so yeah if anyone out there hasn't done that then do it definitely do it yeah, be brave and again how did you get your team to buy into reshaping your offering uh lots of training and hadn't had to get their buy-in and they in the beginning were um we can't do that you know we'll lose instructions but yeah they were in a panic about it they were adamant that they'd lose instruction um but educating them um and getting them on board we did a lot of role play and all that sort of thing. So we didn't just throw them out there. Um, and yeah, and, and they're a good team. You know, they're all quite, very, very experienced. Um, and yeah, it, was, it wasn't the drama that I expected it to be at all. Brilliant. And, no, and that's a great point. Professionals practice before they play. They yeah. just don't turn, they just don't turn up. So I'm not sure I like the, the word role play anymore. I've come, I've, I'm coming away <laughs> from that because um, that's that scares the um, living daylight out of me saying yeah. that. Um, <laughs> hi, Sally. Um, your ears must have been burning. Sue was just singing your praises, um, singing the praises of Agents Made Mate Raymaker and the massive difference you, um, you've you done to help um, Richard James and their business. So thanks for joining, course, Sally. <laughs> <laughs> And Luke says, um, loves the dashboard um, you did in the office as well. Yeah. So that's, so. Um, we've got an IT guy, luckily, he says there's all the magic. Um, it's basically a dashboard that shows us exactly what we need to do to achieve our end of month goal. So it, it breaks it down into what do we need to do today? What do we need to do this week? And what do we need to do this month? And that's in terms of how many um, market appraisals we have to book, how many instructions we have to get, how many lets we have to do, how many lets we have to do, how many move-ins. So it's it's a very visual thing, but everyone's eye is on that at all times. So we always know at what point, you know, if we need to step it up a bit or, um, you know, if we're on target. So, yeah, it's a really useful thing. And we've all got it on our phones as well. So if you're out and about and you want to have a glance at it, you can see it on your phone too. So it is okay. useful. And again, if you, at times you find it, if you haven't hit the targets and you need a massive push that all of a sudden your focus then changed right actually we need to get more market appraisals we need to get instructions um yeah. and then everybody's that. on that yeah yeah and luckily i don't have to do that everyone's bought into it so much that they can see it happening and it, and you know they just shift the attention and it just keeps everybody focused keeping the team focused is really important but they are really focused on it Brilliant. Okay. So let's talk about COVID-19. Oh, Kate Gregory. Oh, look, all your fans are on today. How lovely. <laughs> I'm a friend. Right, friends. <laughs> friends and fans. Raving fans. You've got so many raving fans. They're all <laughs> on here. Thanks for joining us. So um, what challenges have you faced with um, COVID-19 and um, how have you managed to overcome them, please? Well, I think it's gone through stages, hasn't it? So the first stage was, um, oh, my God, everybody's got to go home. Um, how are they going to manage to work from home? Is the IT OK? What's their health like? You know, you know the, first, the very first thing we did was to say, has anyone a health issue before we were actually told to go home? Um, and so anyone with asthma or whatever it might be, we said, right, you, you guys go and work from home. So we did that anyway. Um, uh, and so, but luckily we've got good IT again, our IT is good, so it was quite easy getting everyone set up at home. I'm sure that's not the case for everyone, but for us that wasn't too bad. Um, and then bedding it down, really, um, keeping in contact with everybody, making sure everyone knew what to do. I had a little panic about um, if people would know what to do if they were sitting at home, if they would be distracted, but I couldn't have been more wrong. They, they, everyone, I think everyone's saying the same thing, aren't they? People are so focused and really, really, really step up to the mark. Um, so that was stage one, was just getting it all settled. And then stage two was probably all the changes in lettings particularly because we had to keep going. And those sales pretty much had to close down, didn't they? But in lettings, that absolutely wasn't the case. So rents had to come in, maintenance had to be dealt with. Um, it still all just had to keep going. And rents coming in was was a challenge. 
um, obviously people were thinking that you know landlords were having payment holidays so therefore tenants were having payment holidays we had to manage that um, and then we had to manage payment plans that was there was a lot of that and, and our a lot of our properties have got rent guarantees so we had to put payment plans in place for them um, and what we did was we shifted some of our front end people to support the accounts team because obviously front end weren't doing much but accounts were really on it um, so there was a lot of work around that um, and then and then things like rent guarantee I don't know if anyone else has experienced it but they uh, they were moving the goalposts about what they could and couldn't do and so we were having to keep the landlords in the picture about that so it was absolutely frantic um, and then stage three is opening up again, I think, really. And that, um, frantic again, but the, it's the demand for us. We're probably getting 150 calls a day from applicants. Um, wow. And historically, we would be dealing with that with, with making, calling them and speaking to them on the phone. Um, but you can't speak to 150 people a day when you've got some of your staff. Most of our staff are back, but some are furloughed. Um, so we are look, we're looking at now the options, but, but the first option is they get a question, do we qualify them first? Um, and then before we do a viewing, they have to do a virtual viewing as well first. So we're having to tighten up that side of things, but that's working really, really well. And lots of people are taking properties without without actually viewing them. It might be different in sales, I would have thought. But certainly in lettings, it's, it's happening and I, I'm hoping it's going to continue. So that's coming out of the, doing things very differently. Um, but the front end, or, or the, the back end, for want of a better way of putting it, we're feeling the strain until a month ago, but that's shifted, I think, now onto the front end, and they're, they're feeling the strain. So we're having to put changes in place, and we're having to, you know, look at the, the new world and the tech and things. But there's lots more tech now out there for lettings. Um, and luckily, we, we've now got, well, I've now got the time to look at that, which I never did before. So this is, a, this is an advantage, having this time to look at all the tech as well. Okay, um, Sally Hubbard. I'm a huge fan. Um, I get, a, I, I get, a, I get a high from Kate Gregory. Hi, Kate, um, and Caroline <laughs> Stevens. Thumbs up. Another Sally fan of yours. Sally's my business partner, and Caroline's one of my directors. <laughs> 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 uh, there you go. No wonder they're huge fans. See, I told you you had raving fans. It's lovely. Thanks for thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it. So you touched on touched on tech there. Um, so what technology has helped um, to make a difference in your processes and your lettings business? Um, probably the main one is Fixful. Fixful has been fantastic, especially in COVID, um, because everyone can keep in touch and everyone can see what's going on. And yeah, Fixful is a, a game changer. Really, we've had that probably for four or five years. And it was hard to implement because you've got to really re-educate your landlords and your tenants to use it and they don't want to especially landlords um and that was difficult and we struggled in the beginning but it's well worth persevering because when you get there it's it's fabulous and it's reporting is fantastic and yeah really really useful so that's probably the main one um we're in the process of as we were talking earlier about uh, shifting over to repeat so we've timed that really well we're as we speak i've got to tell people doing that manual data input um, so, th but this has given me a great chance um, with Repit to look at the, the sort of the whole journey, our customer journey, because you're looking at um, even down to template letters. A template letter is integral to your customer journey because, they, they, especially when you're a bigger organisation, because they speak to so many people, and you've got to try and keep that to a minimum. And um, so, it's it's a big thought process. So, this is what I've been doing during COVID: is thinking about the, our customer journey and, and seeing how that works within. Reap it, and we're now in two weeks' time. We're going to go live, so hopefully that's going to be a massive game changer for us. Um, we're also looking at things like Spectre, um, Sprift. Um, I haven't decided what I'm going to use. Facebook Lives for viewings, um, but we're just in the process of making a decision on which of those we're, well, Sprift we're going to use and Spectre we're going to use. Um, but in terms of the 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 media side we're just making a decision on that so but lots of these things weren't really geared up for lettings they've been geared up for sales for a long long time um but lettings has finally caught up we're, we're at the party now um and it's, <laughs> and it's given us the opportunity to do prospecting and that sort of thing that we really probably didn't do as well as we should do and sales have always been on that haven't they but lettings are a little bit behind the curve but we're we're there now yeah, I mean, it's such a great opportunity, um, prospecting. I had a great guest, Spencer Lawrence. I don't know if you come across again, yeah. um, Spencer at Paramount. 
um, you know, we were talking about how to get more landlords, which I'm going to ask you. And he just said one of the things is actually just look at your customer base and start having a conversation with them. You know, yeah. so find out, um, you know, if they've got one property, um, see if you can get them because they like you, know you and trust you to go from one to two. And if you can get the landlord who's got two properties to go from two to four and four to eight. And he said one of the easiest things is, you know, have a look at when they bought the property, whether it's three, four or five years ago. See what they paid for it on land registry and go and have a look, speak to your sales team, see what it's worth and is there X amount of equity in it. See if they go and buy another um, buy to let investment. So Absolutely. great, yeah. great opportunity there to um, yeah. to, do to double your managed um Managed portfolio. Yeah, it's building relationships, isn't it? And you've already got a relationship with your lettings landlords. I mean, you, some of them for twenty years, you've got a relationship. So it should actually be easier for us than for sales because it's, the relationship's already there. Lots of them have also got other properties that you don't know about with other agents, and so that comes up in conversation a lot. And it always horrifies me how very <laughs> dare they um, have to have these conversations, don't you? Yeah, and, they, and the landlords. landlords can I can I come back to your um, the customer journey that you're on going through with mm -hmm. Repit? So obviously, you know, you've learned stuff when you're on your letters through your templates. What else have you learned from going through the customer journey that you think that could um, benefit your landlords and benefit your tenants and also benefit your colleagues that um, work with you? Yeah. So one of our when we went to head office and we've got we've got nearly 50 letting staff and we've got departments um, and one of the criticisms from my landlords was I speak to too many people so um, we've worked really hard at figuring out how we can stop that really um, and the customer journey now is basically they have um, they have the, the negotiator that they speak to at the beginning when the property is being marketed etc and then they're handed but but in a very nice way where they're, they're told who they're going to um, and what that person does so they're handed over to their their tenancy manager, so they've got their own tenancy manager. And that tenancy manager looks after everything apart from the property itself. So they look after, I don't know, disputes, um, renewals, anything that happens in a tenancy, the tenancy manager looks after it. And one person, so that landlord is only going to speak to one person. Um, if there's a property, a maintenance issue, there's one person they deal with there as well. So they've got their own property manager. Um, and that's it. That's all they speak to. So we were getting a situation where um we often we often have people out of the office so the landlord was calling in oh they're not here at the moment can i help and and they didn't like it um so so making that journey more concise and and make uh, allowing them the ability to get to know their property manager and the tenancy manager was really major for us because that was probably the main criticism that we had and um, hopefully we've knocked that now and um we've got happy landlords and are you using, you know, Zoom now to actually introduce the property manager and say, right, hi, you know, let me introduce you to Sue. Sue's going to be the tenancy manager of your property. So if you've got any questions and then that way it's, you know, it's face to, yeah. it's face, to face. We're not we're not doing it now, but we are. It's, it's in the planning stages. Definitely. Yeah. Zoom's the way ahead, isn't it? Okay, well, I think yeah. there's so many. Yeah, I mean, learned so many things, you know. There's no excuse now, actually, for me, why not get the landlord and the tenant um, and the tenancy manager on the phone just yeah. to make sure that ev everybody's happy and, and actually sh go around and show the property so everybody can see it. Well, this um, is a you... inspections. That, that's in my back of my mind whether we should be doing that for inspections. Obviously, you'd have to tell the tenant exactly where to go because they will not necessarily show you what's law. <laughs> Um, but, but when you think about the time and the money that viewings and inspections cost a lettings business, it's massive. So if there's way a way to, to you know sort that out, then it's got to be done, and that's the journey that we're on now. And that's and that's why you think Facebook Live again, and I'm hearing loads of other agents talking about that, and whether it's Facebook Live or where, whether they're using something called Gavel as well um, to to make a difference. I mean, it, it really is making a difference on viewings um, and the it's the genuine people who want to take it or actually as you said before some of them are taking it without seeing it um yeah. it's it's saving you so much time to actually work on what you know what the most important thing is is actually you don't have a business if you don't find landlords yeah absolutely yeah yeah and historically finding landlords for us was 
wasn't just, but our focus was on acquisitions and mergers, but now it's definitely on prospecting. Okay, so what advice and what tips would you give, apart from acquisitions and mergers, um, for agents to actually grow their letting book? Um, well, it's kind of just what we said. Speak, speak to everyone. Everyone is a potential um, client, aren't they? Or knows someone who might be. Um, and focus on it. Don't don't drift from it. So we do. Um, we have call outs. We have my front end team do um, to use a Sally Lawson term, hustle hour. Um, and we do that. Uh, we try and do it every couple of days. It doesn't always happen. Um, the, the downside to that is they then think that that's the time that they hustle. But they should be hustling all the time. Um, so that's that's a, a bit of a you know got to make sure that they're on it for that. Um, but just focus on it, and we're keeping, and we're we're um, we're actually changing our setup. We have negs, listers, and viewer, but we're we're paring that down to just lister viewers, and the listers are just going to list. They, they don't at the, at the moment. My listers do viewings and all sorts of things. I don't want them to do that anymore. I want them just to list. I want them to be hungry, um, and they're gonna they're really gonna drive our database. We've got you know possibly hundreds of thousands of people on our database. Certainly multiple tens of thousands um and they you know they, they need to be communicating with them and they need to be speaking to them we need to be we need to speak to them on social media but that also needs to be supported by phone calls um and, and so I, I, I don't like i don't know if you're around on um thursday at seven o'clock so i've oh, got right. um jeb jeb blunt who's um written a book called fanatical prospecting which just got voted the number one sales prospecting book um, in the world. He's on on um, Thursday at seven o'clock. So we're going okay. to talk about. So if you've got any questions to ask Jeb, yeah. um, he's yeah, exceptional. So I know he talks about the hustle hour being a golden hour, uh, scheduling it in your diary and, and just getting it done. But it's interesting that you've gone down the process of getting your listers to focus on it. Why is that? um because they're my sales people they're you know they that they're the right people they're the right personality um and they 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 I'm going to generate a little more time because there's going to be much less work at the front end because we're not doing all those viewings so that time can be then focused on generating the new business okay and look I agree your database is a is a data bank yeah. um there's so there's absolutely so much gold in there um, and that's an easy win. You know, obviously, you've been going for 11 years. You've got so much data there. Um, and obviously, you know, it's having a reason for the call. So you've got the, um, well, don't know, because they keep on withdrawing it, don't they? But the electrical um, act that was meant to come on on July the 1st or June the 1st or the I'm not first. sure what, whatever, their wor whatever their wording is, because they can't <laughs> seem to get it right. Absolutely. Um, but but that's a great opportunity to be speaking actually not yeah, only to your own know. landlords yeah. um but your competitors landlords you know because some agents i'm sure aren't having those conversations yeah. um and you know i'm sure you can tell me how many different types of legislation there is in lettings at the moment 170, i believe something in the region of 170. is that that's all that's so. smart. <laughs> i think 160 of them seem to come out in the last two years it's been absolutely bonkers it is crazy and do you have tenant fine rent only or rent collection and managed or is it just rent collection and fully we, managed do, you uh, we do two two managed we do a platinum and a gold managed service um we do have a fine tenant only service i don't like it and i don't want it but it's there um but it's really expensive so it's there to discourage landlords from having it but some take it um, and we still have a, some on our database that we've not yet upsold. We've, we've been upselling for the past two or three years. That was part of the tenant fee ban project. Um, and we have been upselling to, to manage. But we've still got a few on there who are digging their heels in. Um, so that's an ongoing project with us. But yeah, don't okay. like them. Don't want them. <laughs> we business not value at all. And how do you think, how do you find upselling challenging? It's not easy. I, you know, my team tell me it's not easy because landlords don't know what they don't know. So, you know, they're spending the time to contact them as often as they can just to say, did you know this? Are you doing that? Um, for example, during this COVID time, we've been speaking to quite a lot of our um, fine tenant only landlords just to say, is everything OK? Um, and basically everything's fine. 
but they've got no idea. They've got absolutely no idea what's coming in October when, you know, people are going to come out of furlough, people are going to lose their jobs. And they need to prepare for that. They need to get, get themselves, you know, get the ducks in a row, but they're oblivious. And so we had a little bit of harbinger of doom, but they need to be informed, don't they? So, we, we, you know, we're plugging away with them. Very much so, Graham. Thanks very much. A uh, couple of final questions. So what about Sue? What do you do to self-improve? Um, and how do you motivate yourself? You told me you've been in your loft for the last <laughs> three months, um, which looks lovely, lovely plant behind you. Um, so what do you do to keep yourself motivated and, and to self-improve? Um, I, I listen to a lot of audio books and I read a bit. Well, let me just say, this is the book that all letting agents should read. The One Minute Manager Meets the Monkey. Because... Okay. Um, and I am an absolute prime candidate for this. All letting agents are perfectionists. We all want to do everything ourselves. Um, and that monkey leaps onto our back and then it sits, but it doesn't need to. So read that book if you're a letting agent and you know, abdicate responsibility. Really important. Okay, so that was by Get Kim Blanchard. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank it's you. It's a small book, but it's a game changer if you're a letting agent, I would say. Um in COVID, this has been amazing. I've been on so many webinars, seminars, Zooms and all that sort of thing. It's an opportunity for learning and, and growing like you would not believe. So, And I'm sure everybody who's going to be watching this will be on that journey too. But that's fabulous. Um, and listen to other people. And, and that's people in the industry and people in your organisation because you don't know everything. Um, and learn from others. And that can be somebody who's you know who's new, new to the game, who's bringing new ideas to the game or somebody... You know who's been a, a, a trainer for 20 years but learn from other people is a major thing um yeah nobody knows everything so what else um book wise would you recommend we've heard some great, great books great recommendations you know, all the books that everyone said in the last few few um webinars i've watched are, are, are the ones aren't they I don't, think, I don't think i can add any more off the top of my head that's probably the main one that no one's mentioned because they're not letting agents Okay. Well, at least I know I've had somebody listening. So thank you and watching. I'm grateful. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. And, and what about keeping your colleagues motivated? How do you manage to do that? Uh, I'm lucky in that my directors, that's a big strength. Of theirs. They're really good at that. And, and they're really good at communicating and buoying people up. Um, training and that sort of thing obviously helps. But reward you know you know recognition recognition reward is a, a big thing um and giving them ownership that's another thing don't you know don't just keep them in a corner and keep them doing that same job recognize that there's growth there and encourage that growth um we've started putting them on leadership courses and that sort of thing because there are little stars in there you've just got to you've got to get them get them out of there good so final 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 question unless anybody else has any questions um if you were starting your letting agency today what three things would you do differently oh gosh that's a hard one um well don't do things for nothing that's the first one but I, hopefully we've all learned that lesson already but certainly in 1997 we all did everything for nothing um and again don't do it all yourself because you'll implode and i i was in that movie for a long long time so um definitely share the workload out um, and a good CRM system so we've missed the boat a bit by being so late to the party with with um, uh, Repit where from a prospecting point of view we've been using just to give you an idea of how much of a nightmare we've had we were using because we've had acquisitions and things at the same time we were using CFP, Vibra, Dupix and Fixflow so my team had four systems that they were having to use and it was an absolute nightmare um, and that made prospecting, back to prospecting, because that's my thing at the moment, but that made prospecting really, really difficult. Um, and it made communicating with clients really difficult as well in terms of social media, emails, or just anything was really difficult. Um, and now we're at a point where we're having to put over 2,000 tenancies onto Repit, which is a challenge. So do that, do that before you get to 2,000 properties. Get your good CRM system as early as you can, I would say. Brilliant. Well, so I'm really grateful for your time. As I said, um, thanks very much for, for coming on earlier today. So thanks for everybody here, thanks very much for joining us. Um, if you go to agentstogether.co.uk, um, there's a wellbeing webinar that's starting at, at one o'clock. 
which if you can't um, watch there and then, please register so you get the replay um, and get your colleagues to um, to look at it and, and get involved. On Thursday, as I alluded to, we've got Jeb Blunt, um, fanatical prospector, um, who's also written another book that I've just um, listened to on Audible on called Inked, about negotiating. So we're going to be talking about prospecting, we're going to be talking about negotiating, and that's going to be a tea time learning, 7 o'clock on Thursday. So thanks very much for joining us. Have a productive um, Tuesday afternoon. And Sue, good luck with Repit. Thanks Hope it goes well. really well, get it yes. sorted out. And um, I look forward to seeing your further successes and continued growth. So well, thanks very much. Thank you, Stephen. Nice to talk to you. You too.